Hello again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 14th of February, 2019. Happy Valentine's Day to those that, well, to those that are like me, single. Article posted on USA Today. Former Chicago cop convicted of murdering Laquan McDonald, beaten by fellow prison inmates. Written by Amar Mahani, M.A. D H A N I of USA Today, published on the 14th of February. Hmm. All right, well, first of all, uh, I don't think that uh, Officer Jason Van Dyke murdered like Quinn McDonald. And I've spoken about it in previous videos. Like Quinn McDonald approached Officer Van Dyke with a knife. Now, what they really used against him, him meaning Officer Van Dyke, is that he emptied his gun, which is why he received 16 counts of aggravated battery, one for each bullet. And I've done videos, and I've posted videos about police shootings, one in particular in Southern California, where two officers emptied their guns on a 17-year-old girl as she was rolling on the ground. They hit her, I don't know, 18 times, if not more. Eventually, that turned out to be a lawsuit, and Huntington Beach paid the family for that murder. But the cops were exonerated. Why? Well, because they brought in their chief trainer, who said that they're trained to, once they engaged, empty their guns. I don't know why the attorneys in Chicago didn't use the same tactic to defend Jason Van Dyke. I'm actually going to reach out to an attorney that's representing Van Dyke. In other case, former Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke, who was in the midst of a nearly seven-year prison sentence, for the murder of a black teen was assaulted by fellow inmates soon after being transferred to a prison in Connecticut earlier this month. The ex-cop attorneys tell us USA Today why they put him at the general population is insane. Van Dyke, who was convicted in October for second degree murder and 16 counts of aggravated battery with a firearm for the 214 shooting death of Lequin Quinn McDonald, was beaten soon after being transferred to a new prison, says Jennifer Blagg. A defense attorney assisting Van Dyke on the appeal. I'm going to try to get a hold of Jennifer Blagg. The ex-cop was sentenced last month to an 81-month sentence for the state charges. Federal records show he's being held at a federal prison in Banbury, Connecticut. Blagg declined to detail his injuries. A source close to Van Dyke family who was not authorized to comment to the media told USA Today that Van Dyke suffered facial injuries in the February 5th attack. Van Dyke had been in jail in West Illinois and has awaited sentencing because authorities in Chicago feared they could not assure his safety in the Cook County Jail. Since his sentencing, Black said that Van Dyke has been held in at least one other facility before he was moved to Danbury. He was in another facility where he felt safe and then he was moved to Connecticut, Black said. Hmm. A spokesperson for the Illinois Department of Corrections did not immediately respond to requests for comments about the incident and why Van Dyke was placed in federal custody. The injuries were not life-threatening, but nonetheless jarring to Van Dyke and his family, who have expressed concern that prison officials won't be able to keep him safe. We're all petrified and in fear for Jason's life, Tiffany Van Dyke told the Sun Star. It is the prison's job to keep him safe, and they're not doing their job. I want this rectified immediately. He was never supposed to be in general population. Now, what you might not be aware of, the Illinois Attorney General asked State Supreme Court to resentence Chicago cop. They want him to go away for 18 years instead of the 81 months that he was sentenced to. Van Dyke's defense team has been in contact with the Illinois Department of Correction to discuss his safety in the aftermath of the incident, Black said. Jason runs into problems because of what he represents, and there are inmates who represent, resent that, 
and he would be proud to say they are the guy that beat him up or hurt him, Black said USA Today. We're obviously concerned because what's he's come to symbolize. Van Dyke shot McDonald in an encounter that began after police were called to a parking lot on the south side of Chicago on the evening of October 20th, 214. Police reports a person breaking into trucks and stealing radios. Officers arrived to find 17-year-old McDonald walking erratically in the street with a small knife. Well, that girl that was shot by those two cops in California had a little tiny pocket knife. Van Dyke pulled up to the scene, got out of a squad car, and within seconds opened fire. He shot the teen 16 times. The shooting was captured on police dash cam video, which appears to show McDonald moving away from Van Dyke when he opened fire. Illinois Attorney General Kwan Raul announced this week that he had petitioned the Illinois court to order a sentencing resentencing of Van Dyke, arguing the trial judge did not follow state laws in sentencing process. Raul argues that Van Dyke should face a sentence of no less than 18 years in prison. Van Dyke's defense team also announced this week that they would appeal the former officer's conviction. You know, I also did a video of a shooting in Mesa, Arizona, and uh, the man was ordered by the sergeant to crawl in the hallway. Crawl. If you move and do anything other than that, we'll kill you. The man was terrified. One of the officers, who's AR-15, on the cover plate that flaps open when you pull the trigger, it was inscribed, if you see this, you're fucked. Well, the man was crawling, and it's all on video, and then his pants were being pulled down, so he leaned back to pull his pants up, and that officer wasted him with about three or four air 15 rounds, two, two, three rounds, or five, five, six rounds. You know who should have been held responsible? The sergeant. There was no reason to have the guy crawl. They should have said, don't move, and they should have handcuffed him. But these cops are obviously fucked up in the head. And the cop that pulled the trigger, well, he's no longer a cop, not for Mesa, who knows where the hell he is. But he wasn't charged with murder, and he should have been. You know the problem with the laws, it depends on what state. Different laws apply for the same event in different states. That's nuts. This officer should never have been charged if that black dude would have listened when he was ordered to drop the knife or he was out there stealing radios, whatever the hell he was doing, he'd still be alive. The cop was doing his job. And I don't understand how other cops aren't protesting this. I'll attach the link. You look at it. I'm going to try to get a hold of this Jennifer Blake. If I do, I'll let you guys and gals know. Thanks for listening. The link will be attached.